Hey, what is up guys? This is Gabe or G4K Motion Designer and I'm super excited to release this new tutorial. A lot of you keep asking me day by day to release some tutorial and here we are. Here we are. This is going to be a super massive awesome tutorial or at least I hope just because this is not a live tutorial which means uh, I'm not doing this project while I'm talking just because at that time I really didn't know uh, what I was doing uh, basically so I didn't know how to animate it and stuff so I decided to uh, record it before and then do a voiceover like I'm doing right now so I hope this will be uh, helpful as well um, let's see and of course I want to say thank you to the actual creator of this Chocobo uh, which is not me but um, Guntur Saladin I will put uh, his name social links and stuff in the description uh, follow him just because he's a very very talented illustrator and um, the Chocobo is awesome so I can say anything else uh, check him out Coming back to the tutorial, this is going to be a quite long video, at least an hour, and it won't be so easy to understand, especially from beginners. But don't worry, my little newbies, because G4K will share the original project file for the little price of $155.99 you can download... No, just kidding, just kidding! I'm going to share this project file for free. You will find the download link in the description so you can see my deepest secrets inside my projects. Don't miss it, bitches! Okay, I'm going too far for sure, but let's begin, let's begin the real tutorial. As you can see now, I'm slicing the, the poor Chocobo head into pieces, just because the first thing you're going to do when you want to animate a mascot logo is just slice, detach the all stuff into a lot of pieces just because more pieces you have more complex your animation will be more detailed and so on so uh, here we have a lot of things to work on like the eyes like the little hair like the beak of the Chicago the head so um, everyone in a single layer so after that we can easily import the um, illustrator file into After Effects without have any kind of problems and that's it and let's, let's turn this part into an ASMR tutorial just because I have couple of seconds and I don't know what to say just because it's a simple speed animating and it's not a real tutorial not yet so I don't know what to say right now let's do some tapping to kill the time keep okay, stop what the fuck you, you you can't you can't do that this is your tutorial you don't do so much tutorial, people want to see a quality, high quality tutorial. So you you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, as I as I s just said, this uh, I I don't know what to say. What what should I say? I I'm I'm detaching all the parts of the Chocobo. So I guess. I will put a song <laughs> while this is this is happening and um, let's think something 
interesting to say, I don't know what to say, but I guess we are done. Okay, no? Yes? Okay, as you can see, we have so many levels to work on, at least 10 levels with all the Chocobo face pieces. Let's open up After Effects and let's import. Important stuff, important stuff. I set it the composition as um, 1500 pixels and 16 frames per second. Why 16 frames per second? Because 16 frames per second is more suitable for this kind of animation. For cartoon stuff, 16 frame per se frames per second is a good choice. Um, I'd like to sp speak more about this, this, um, this particular setup about frame per second but this is not the right place to do that so maybe maybe I will maybe I will maybe when I will start hopefully live streams I will talk about a lot of stuff a lot of uh, tips that I use to make my animation better so now I just imported my my illustrator file on After Effects choosing the, um, the composition import so I can have all the separated layer uh, usable okay so let's let's begin with the add first right click and transform the illustrator fi file into shape layers so I can manage all the groups inside it as you can see I, I can manage um, separately from the other stuff the the shadows the the head the the stroke of the head and stuff now what I've just done is duplicate the face and uh, create um, a precomposition just to have it as a reference just because we are going to animate it to, to the opposite side, like the face is turning from the right to, to the left and um, the, um, the pose will be the same so right and left will be the actual same so why not to have a reference like that so we can move, so we can do all the, the, the interpolation all the, uh, the shape morphing with um, a specific reference which is always a good stuff so now let's start with the moving the face a little bit on the left and now I'm going to do the shape morphing uh, I'm going to speed up this part just because it's it's like moving the, the points and uh, uh, changing the Bezier to to make it um, to make it exactly like the reference we've just created so here we are let's speed up a little bit this is not too difficult just follow the reference you you created and follow the shape here it is point by point just be patient and here we are let's see how it work it worked pretty well it seems like he's actual rotating 3d rotation just with a simple morphing and position interpolation so good stuff good stuff let's talk about the stroke I'm not going to use the original stroke just because we have the After Effects stro stroke which is going to follow our movements we are also going to lose those uh, stroke details but this is not a big deal so we can move on the next stuff I'm going to do is animate the beak of the Chocobo but first I'm going to copy and paste all the facial facial features to the Chocobo into the reference composition so we have the old stuff 
into the um, into the reference and we can see them just when we need them here we are copy and pasted and let's enable the old stuff here we are so we can see the chocobo in to the opposite side let's block let's freeze the frame and let's uh, enable just the head and the beak so the first stuff I'm going to do is just the shape morphing and position of the of the of the beak first of all let's transform it like we did before into a shape layer so we can manage all the stuff inside the layer like the lights the the big shapes and so on let's um le uh, let's hide the old stuff beside the big shape now i just going to do a um, position interpolation so just a movement here we are let's let's follow the phase movement with this with these positions and let's change the path so let's do the the shape morphing like we did with the head let's put up the reference so we can see better and here it is let's speed up like before just because they are shape morphing so edges bezier curves basic stuff and blah 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 so guys i hope this uh, won't be too too difficult to understand but um you know this is not too basic so uh, you should have some some skills in after effects to understand all these passages but as i said as i've said i i will share the actual com project file of this so you can understand uh, step by step showing it directly into your after effects okay let's do some little fixes some little adjustment during the shape interpolation what the fuck is happening out there okay it works it works pretty well so it, it seems like he's rotating so that's that's our goal so we win <laughs> and let's add as we did before the stroke so right click layer styles stroke let's set the stroke sides following the reference of course and here we are it works next stuff uh, i'm going to add uh, the big details which are like some waves some orange waves and i'm going to do them just creating uh, some shape layer with the right colors as you can see let's let's create a re rectangular shape first with the first color then another one pretty similar to this one with the other color which is a, a brighter brown uh, brighter orange inside the same shape layer like this just simple rectangle oops I missed the color let's go inside the shape layer let's mute it so we can see the color behind it okay let's move this under the first one 
let's duplicate the second one and move the third a little bit forward with the brighter color of the beak okay so we have this shape let's duplicate it in three pieces and let's enable one piece for each shape layer so we so we have all separated let's add to all of them a wave warp effects to make it um, to to create the um, the waves the waves that the original beak has let's increase the height and width of the of the waves let's change a little the face and copy and paste this effect to, to all the other shape layers maybe l just changing the face a little bit so they won't be like you know the same okay let's do that to the third layer no uh, actually the third layer doesn't need it uh, just because you can see the waves inside the nose of the of the brighter color so let's create a precomposition with all these three shape layers and now we are going to mask this layer with the with the big shape and let's put it above our pre-composition we just created so we can add an alpha mask and uh, here we are here we have all the details inside our nose I've, I've just turned down the groups we we didn't need and that's it now I'm going to create the, um, the inside nose details movement just a simple rotation which will follow the head rotation like this and a little movement okay this wasn't needed at all but I wanted to do it just because I I thought that could have been nice just just this and here we are I guess it works pretty well and now let's go with the nose details like the lights the lights is always something that that is underrated that's because it's boring to do and stuff but it gives a lot of um, deepness a lot of 3d style to your to your design so it's always a good thing to animate it to okay let's just take it from the um, the weak the the big shape let's enable them and let's set a path keyframe and position it's just a simple position maybe a little bit of of shape morphing but nothing too too crazy And here we are, let's go to the middle point of the animation and let's move them here, here and let's change a little bit the shapes of this light point here you can see these rectangles which are like a mask inside the shape layer now I'm going to delete it it's like a group inside the group it's something that Illustrator always put inside the, the files delete and delete these groups okay so let's change a little bit last details a little bit of rotation and I guess 
we are done for the middle position let's go to the final position we can also copy and paste the the puff the first puff keyframe to have the the initial shape and start from them here i'm going i'm also going to change a little bit the shape maybe making making it a little sh sharper following the the big shape like this not too much just a little touch like this a little bit here let's squeeze it a little and and it work yeah it works okay so what's next the eyes ladies and gentlemen the eyes it was pretty funny to animate the eyes now i show you why let's enable them from the reference pre-composition uh, i don't know what i'm doing right now okay i'm just changing the <laughs> the layer colors it's always a good stuff to do so you can uh you know be more confident with your compositions and stuff like that it's always useful have a clean working space clean composition clean stuff so you will work better for sure okay let's isolate the eyes creating shapes from the illustrator file as always and let's um let's mute the shadows of the eyes which we, we we don't need them right now now i'm going to um, fix a little the eye shapes okay just a little adjustment and i guess we are ready to start the animation oh first of all i duplicated this layer to to have the two eyes separated so the right and the left like this just mute the group of the other eye whatsapp message is coming <laughs> okay and I guess we can start moving them I guess maybe first I'm going to change the anchor point exactly which is crucial because we are going to rotate them in a bit okay let's move the first the left one on the left more or less in the same position of the reference like this and let's scale it a little rotation a little bit and now okay and now I guess I'm going to change the shape so in the puff in the puff properties here it is so vertex bezier like we did before nothing nothing too simple okay i guess it works pretty well let's go to the other one to the right one let's set all the keyframes so position scale and rotation and 
let's start position first a little of rotation just a touch scale it to make it look um, similar to the reference eye and let's change the shape just a touch just a touch like Bob Ross would say just a touch okay I don't know why I didn't speed it up these parts <laughs> but they are quite fast so not a big deal okay okay it doesn't need to be super super perfect but I guess it works here we are a nice fake 3D let's see with the beak it looks pretty cute so far okay let's go let's move on to the little wings let's enable the left wing from the reference composition okay so we need to have it a little hidden from the face in the opposite you know position so let's start with the position and rotation first of course we moved the anchor point um, into into the the beginning of the the wing to the nearest part with the with the face let's change the position into the medium into the middle state and a little of rotation okay and let's move back okay a little bit on the left more okay let's move a little back for the final state no a little more on the left and let's move back here we are okay so just a combination of position and rotation nothing too crazy so far of course this is not the final effects later we 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 are going to to mask these little wings of course behind the body but let's create the basic movement first okay let's enable the other one the right one okay now i duplicate the left one just because it will it will do pretty similar movements from the left one so I just copy and pasted it to to speed up a little the process not same movement though so it needs a little of fixing a little of rotation it's always good have, having in mind how this kind of stuff moves in the real life like a little wings of a bird so they are quite light so they they follow the movement they they moves like with the air so you you should treat it like a soft a soft body so how a soft body moves in the, in a real life that is what you need to have in mind to recreate um, a good looking animation okay like before I did a three steps interpolation of the position and the rotation let's add a little of circular 
easy is just pressing Ctrl plus click on the frame to have this kind of frame. Let's adjust a little the Bezier of the movement. And let's see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Okay, let's work on this little tuft. I don't know if this is the right name. I guess so, but who cares, guys? Who cares? Who cares about languages? Useless stuff. Let's slate it into reference composition so we can see it into our main one. And let's create a shape layer from the actual illustrator layer into our composition move the anchor point into the bottom of the tuft and let's position it when it should go in the opposite side okay now as you can see we can manage all the groups independently and we are going to morph the path first we are not going to use the after effects path in this case just because it has those little sharp edges as you can see uh, like the the left the bottom one and uh, we cannot recreate it in After Effects yet. I don't know, if you know uh, how to do that, please tell me, but I can't uh, find a, a way to, to do that. So the shape morphing is, is the, 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 the only solution I found to, to this. Um, so yeah. Shape morphing here, mm, it doesn't really work in the middle in the middle point of the animation so we're going to adjust it a little bit just to make it more thinner just moving a little bit this point and this bezier okay just a touch and should work now Okay, that's nice. Let's do the inside of the tuft. Same stuff, same shape morphing. We are under the the actual the actual stroke, so we we don't need to be super precise, super super clean with the shape. Okay, now the shadow, oh no, maybe I, I will do the shadow later with all the other shadows. Okay, let's see how it work, how it works with all the features, it seems like working pretty well. Let's do the back one, the back tuft. We have two tufts. So we, we work with the bigger bigger one first. So this one is quite hidden from the face, so we don't need to be super clean in this in this animation. Just let's move the anchor point on the on the right of the taft so we can rotate it from that point and let's Let's enable our usual properties like scale, position, and puff, like we did with with the other pieces. Let's scale a little bit so to simulate the the rotation in a three D space. Just an y axis scale, okay. So remove the chain and just just change the y axis scale. 
let's see how it works without the face so we can see behind it and let's um, let's change the the scale into the into a negative number so we can we can have it into the opposite side and let's put it right on the reference like this so just a combination of position scale and now we're going to add a little rotation to it or maybe later I don't remember a little adjustment it's hidden from the face so you 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 can like jump cut it it doesn't matter just need to follow the head rotation nothing else okay so it works so far let's do the other one the little one vector um, shape layer as always from the illustrator layer right click and create a shapes from vector let's enable it from the reference composition so we can see it to the opposite side isolate the, the tuft and the head and let's start with the, uh, the animation as always let's move the anchor point first because we are going to rotate it then position so put it a little on the on the right into the center and now we are going to overturn it just putting a negative value on the on the x value on the scale removing the chain of course okay let's fix the rotation and let's put it to the right place following the reference of course a little bit down okay so now let's transform these keyframes into circular easy keyframe and we are done okay here we have the basic movements all done more or less of course we are going to uh, do some adjustment later but the basic movements are done okay now we are going to work on the, the speed of the movements so we are going to work with the easy keyframes right now let's let's um, add some influence to the easy of the face movement I always stay in value between 70 and 80 percent of influence of the easy keyframes especially on this kind of work when you have uh, like 16 frames per second or so so as I I've just done with the face let's work on the on the beak first transforming the uh, central frames into circular easy keyframe and the one in the sides just press F9 to transform them into a basic easy and then um, modify them through the the visual tool into After Effects changing the influence to like 70, 75, 80 it's up to you and see the result
just about trying and trying so many times um, I don't know in advance which kind of value to apply to this frame or the other it's just about trying okay so I added a little offset to the frame so the, the nose moves a little later from the head just a little delay and now I'm going to add a little um, smear which is like a uh, one of the 12 principle of anim uh, animations which uh, simulate the, um, the velocity that the nose takes while the head is moving and it's just a little scheme from the x, x ax of the scale so just scale it like 100 at the first frame, 125 in the middle frame, and 100 to the to the last frame. Just to have it like a squash a little while the the head is moving like this. Okay, let's go with the eyes right now, or maybe we just need to. To change the beak mask because we changed a lot inside the the beak layer so um, we need to replace the mask with the with the copy with a duplicate of the the beak layer so just duplicate it control D and replace the old mask so we we just need we, we, we so we don't need to um, do all this stuff uh, do all these cha changes we we've done to the to the actual big layer into the mask one just copy and paste and you you have your work done okay let's go to the eyes right now same stuff so easy is keyframes pressing f9 Let's change the influence to 70 to 80. It's up to you. Both sides. Here I put like 85 just to see how it how it look it. And now just add an echo effect. If you don't know, echo just uh, recreate a kind of motion blur to the the object we just need to set the echo time the number of the echoes and more echoes you you put and more accurate will be will be like your your motion blur effect so something like this okay we don't need that much so I'm going to decrease it a little I just need it when the phase is moving very very fast so in the middle point of the movement while there is the, the fastest movement of the head we just need a little of this motion blur to increase the, the, velo the, the velocity sensation you know okay let's put some keyframe just starting from zero number of echoes to like 30 and come back to zero just to have it just just a little touch just a touch just a touch doesn't need it to be too much okay let's copy and paste to the other eye uh, copy and paste the echo it it doesn't take all the value so we just need to f to uh, redo them the echo time and number of echoes just fixing a little the frames let's set this value okay you know just to have this this kind of motion blur effect while they are rotating let's see how it looks 
with the beak too. I guess we are going to to fix the beak a little later because it's not so much. Okay, now I've just adjusted a little the the offset of the eye just to see how it looks. Just make your tries, guys. It's uh, it's really up to you. There's no uh, a standard way to to work on this. Okay, now I'm going to adjust a little the wings. So same stuff. Just adding an easy keyframes. But first, let me mute the other the other pieces which are not useful right now and here I'm going to set the middle position frame into a row across time frames um, which don't affect too much to the to the timing of the of the interpolation so they are quite useful right now let's change the influence of these is as always and now I'm going to do a like um, an advanced stuff. I'm going to add an expression to the rotation of the wings. This expression, I will put the, the code in the description. Of course, you will find it in the, in the project file. But it's, it's like um, a bouncing script. Very, very useful. Like here, um, just alt click to the rotation and paste it into the text area this is going to add a little bouncing to the to the wings in this case inside it you can also change the value of the amplitude frequency and the cadiment so you can better manage your bouncing this is a very very nice script i use it a lot a lot of motion artist use it so why not to share it with you and here it is quite nice bouncing we're going to do the same stuff for the other wing here I'm just seeing if it, it works properly just a little rotation fixing and very important, this script works just when you have a normal frame. So not easy, just the standard frame in the end. So if you want the, um, the, the script affect your, your frames, it needs to be a normal frame. So it doesn't work with easy keyframes or other kind of keyframes. Here, just checking the wings' movements. Oh, here I actually delayed the, the rover cross time because it didn't. They they didn't work how I wanted. Little adjustment here, just do some tries. As I've said, guys, I, I didn't know in, in the beginning how to animate it, so um, I've done a lot of tests before <laughs> the, the Chocobo actually came out well. Okay, let's add the mask to the wings. Just duplicate the face layer and we can use it as mask. Very, very simple. Of course, the alpha inverted mask, just uh, because we we want to, we want the wing to be hidden from from the face, like he's going uh, behind the face. So we need the alpha inverted mask. Just duplicate it and put it above 
the right wing, same stuff but opposite side. So alpha inverted as before in the beginning and then we can cut the layer to, to disable the mask effects, very simple. Here some adjustment. Okay. It works. What do you think, guys? Is it work? I guess so. I'm too good, guys. Obviously, it works. G4K here to destroy the other motion designers. Just kidding. Because when, when I don't know what to say, I start talking about random stuff and useless stuff. I guess I have some mental illness. I don't know. I let you know. <laughs> okay. Okay, next step, I guess I, we are going to add an echo like we did with the eyes to the wings because we want to replicate the same effects. So like um, a motion blur while he's moving. Now, uh, where, um, wh where you can read the echo operator is like when the echo actually works and if you set maximum or minimum, it gives you different effects. Now we set it maximum because we, we, want, we want the wing like motion blur from, from the top and not, not from the bottom. Not the stroke, but the inside of the wing. like this and set like the eyes the frames because we want it to to work just while he's uh, he's moving very very fast so to increase the sensation of of the speed just let it exist in the middle of the interpolation like here and same stuff to the left one copy and paste the effects set as maximum the eco -oper operator and let's see how it works with the mask bam It's good, isn't it? I like found this kind of effect like randomly. I said, whoa, just just add an echo and let's see how it work. Holy shit, it's working. And that's it. Now I use it all the time. Okay, let's Let's go on the the tuft. Setting all these frames into easy keyframes as always. The mid one into circulars, circular circular easy and the sides one into normal easy Okay, now I added a wave warp effects to the tuft. Uh, if I remember well, I will delete it later just because it didn't work how I wanted. So, but let's see how it works so far. So I wanted to recreate like the wind effect to the tuft. So a wave warp is the, the perfect tool to do that so like this but I didn't like so much so I, I, I removed this effect now I just decreased the speed of the wind it's not too bad but the, the effect I I added later was better so 
that's it now just just go on the back duft to make it look better so here just change the influence of the easy keyframes as always and here I added an echo effects too but it mm, it doesn't affect too much here so it's really up to you it wasn't necessary actually but I I wanted to add it to the back tuft too so same stuff like the eyes like like the little wings and that's it now I copy and pasted the expression the bouncing expression because we want it to exist even on the back tuft like this a little bouncing in the end of the position interpolation like this and now I guess I, I went to the rotation exactly just to give just to give it a little more movements to make it more dynamic so little rotation with an easy in the beginning and the same opposite side starting from the top to the bottom here adding the easies beside the last one and copy and pasted the expression so we have a bouncing to the rotation like this let's fix a little the rotation and here we are okay now I just speed it up a little because it was just little adjustment just offsetting the frames a little just to see how it worked this is really up to you just minor stuff not so much important okay I guess I found the right way and let's go with the last one actually the last one is his influence as always to 70 percent and I guess here I added an echo too like to recreate the same effects we talked about earlier and a little bouncing too if I remember well so here I I played with the easiest influences just to see just to find the better movement like offsetting and changing the value just testing uh, even randomly but just move frames change value it's always a good a good thing to do even to 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 understand how they work and how the final animation look it's always a, a good stuff let's add the expression to the position interpolation so we have a little bouncing let's change the amplitude 
make it bounce more or less depending on what you're looking for. Okay, uh, here I, I added a wave warp too. I guess I kept this into the to the back tuft. I kept the wave warp. So like a wind wind effect. Even if it's, it's like subtle, subtle effects, not so much visible, but just a detail. Details make the difference. Okay, here you can see the wiggling of the wave warp, which is looking good. Here we are, wiggling. Okay. Let's enable the old thing. Now I guess I'm going to fix a little this tuft the upper tuft adding a CC band effects so we can manage the, the bending and uh, give him like a rubber look more bouncing more more cute like this just um, setting the the anchor points which are the start and the end of the of the of the band setting a keyframes of course because we are we are moving the taft so the anchor points needs to follow these moves okay so first of all let's add keyframes to start and end and let's see how it looks i can see some issues in the middle uh, now just let me put down the echo so it does his effect before the bend let's move a little upward the anchor point and it works I guess yep it follows the movement so we can move on now just changing the bend value we can see how these plugin affects our tuft so let's set the first keyframe to zero and the second one to around 70 to, ve to have it like bending into the left because the head is moving into the right so when the, the head moves on the right the tuft will be on the left and the opposite let's set easy keyframe to the first three frames and let's add the same expression to the band effect remember the last frame needs to be a normal frame and here it is as you can see start from the left and turns on the right doing this kind of wiggling movement which is like a rubbery or gummy movement and we are good because our chocobo is so cute is so soft so needs to be soft while he's moving here it is super cute bitch Okay, now I added a little offset to the upper tuft to make it move a little later. And now, guys, we are almost done to this tutorial. This is um, this um, is like I'm I'm adding the the shadows to all the pieces. These are just shape morphing uh, like 
like the beginning of this tutorial so uh, it doesn't need so much explanation so I speeded up this part even with uh, with the with the opposite movement because here we have the chocobo moves from the right to the left um, it also needs to do the opposite movement but it's just a copy and paste keyframe so um, I thought it, it it wouldn't be so useful to explain it and maybe uh, the tutorial would have been too long it's it's already an hour that I'm talking <laughs> so here we are guys hope my spaghetti English wasn't too much embarrassing to listen and uh, I hope this uh, this tutorial will be super helpful for you guys I really really hope it and um, I love doing this for you guys when I when I have time I, I of course do this for you for your for your learning because um, I want I really want the motion design community in this field in the esports video game twitch YouTube fields grows so 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 bad so again thanks for listening mm, give me a like give me feedbacks if you want if you find something unclear or wrong or I don't know whatever you want tell me in the comments and follow me if you want on Twitter on Facebook on Instagram on Instagram I usually post my my stories with the work in progress so you can insult me there or asking me questions I always reply so again guys I really appreciate your support and keep doing awesome motion design and see you next time see you next time with G4K motion designer peace